Marcus Lattimore tore essentially every ligament in his knee on this play in 2012, in what's come to be known as one of the most infamous and severe football injuries that we've ever seen. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and if you're new to this channel and you enjoy learning about sports injury mechanisms and sort of the underlying anatomy, then be sure and subscribe to the channel for all future videos. The injury mechanism was a forced hyperextension and subsequent dislocation of Lattimore's right knee, and this is one of those things that's just horrific luck with everything having to happen at just the right time and the right impact locations on the limb for something to be this severe. But as he's running out to the side here, right as Lattimore's right foot plants, the Tennessee defender comes in and hits him low and forces his knee to bend backwards into hyperextension. Right away from the position of Lattimore's leg as it swung around, we could see that something was severely wrong. From this other view, we get another look at that forced hyperextension. So right as that right foot is planting and anchoring into the ground, we have to realize is that of course, all of Lattimore's momentum is carrying him in this direction. His trunk is flexed forward. He's sort of tumbling his body forward over the Tennessee defender. So now when a force comes in acting in the opposite direction, but his foot is anchored into the ground, there's nowhere for all that force to be dissipated other than for the knee to hyperextend backwards. If this play were such that it was maybe a step sooner and Lattimore's leg was more planted basically directly underneath of him, then what likely would have happened is his foot just would have been knocked backwards. But because his leg is planted in front of his body, his momentum's carrying him forward, it just hits the forces at the right time to cause the knee to hyperextend. There also was a significant amount of forced varus alignment. So here we can see the Tennessee defender coming in and look at the angle of Lattimore's leg. His leg is being forced outward and that's varus positioning. When the knee goes inward, that's valgus. When it's outward, that's varus. So of course, this is gonna stretch everything that's located on the outside of his knee. So now we have a combination of hyperextension with a forced varus position that makes it even more of a high risk sort of situation. Next, we'll talk about what we saw with Lattimore's leg on the ground and then walk through our anatomy model. But first, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Blinkist. Imagine if there was a way to take all the best and most important concepts from thousands of nonfiction books and podcasts and condense them down into the key points to help you understand the content better. Well, there is, and it's Blinkist. The Blinkist app enables you to understand the most important things from over 5,000 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. Obviously, I'm a big sports fan, and one that I'd recommend is The Sports Gene by David Epstein, talking about the science behind extraordinary athletic performance. You can easily go in and it's summarized into these key blinks to allow you to understand the main content in the book better. You can even listen to each of the blinks if that's easier for you to consume. They've also got this awesome new feature called Blinkist Connect, where basically for free, you can add a second person to your premium account, like a family member or a friend, and share your content with them. Head to the link in the description or go to blinkist.com slash brianmd to get a seven day free trial plus 25% off Blinkist annual premium. This is gonna make it so much easier to understand and be able to recall those key points from your favorite books. So take advantage and check out Blinkist today. Thank you again, Blinkist, for sponsoring the video and let's get back to our learning. One of the injuries that Lattimore sustained was a dislocated kneecap. So the kneecap is called the patella and we basically can see it right here sitting off to the side of Lattimore's leg. Whenever the knee is hyperextended, the whole knee extensor mechanism between the patellar tendon, the quadriceps tendon, and the kneecap has nothing tensioning it up against the femur. And so then any sort of twisting movement, that kneecap can just dislocate off to the side. So that's one of the significant injuries he had right away that we could see was this dislocated patella sitting off to the side. In this position, we can also see that that leg is again severely bent inward. That's that same varus alignment positioning that we saw from the initial impact suggesting that there's at least been significant injury to those lateral structures of the knee. Now, when the medical team gets out here and sees this, it's pretty apparent right away that this is a major joint injury, and they probably realized right away that he had a dislocated knee. Sometimes they can actually be pretty subtle because it might dislocate, but then go right back in a proper position. But the fact that his knee was so bent when he was laying on the ground tells them right away that they're dealing with a major injury. So the first thing they're gonna be trying to do is just stabilize the joint. Whenever you dislocate a joint, we worry as much about the soft tissue structures like the ligaments, the tendons, et cetera, but we also worry about the blood supply and the nerves because those are two structures that if they're injured with the joint dislocation could be something that could lead to limb loss or have even a bigger impact on that individual's quality of life and athletic career. I wonder if even what we're seeing is one of the medical staff here checking the pulse on the inside of his leg because they know it's a significant injury, you wanna make sure that you check the pulse 
to see if there's been any compromise in the blood flow. If we look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, let's walk through all these different stabilizing structures that are injured and just talk about knee dislocations. Each joint has passive and active stabilizers. Passive are the ligaments, the capsule, the bones. Active are going to be the muscles. So here we're just gonna focus on those passive ones. The first thing that we'll see kind of working outside in is the joint capsule. We've seen basketball players with knee hyperextensions where they just have a capsular strain. That's going to be this lining that goes around the joint. It's not very strong. It can easily be injured, especially in a severe dislocation like this. The next thing we're gonna see with the hyperextension is this popliteal oblique ligament that sort of runs across the backside of the knee and is again, one of the first structures to tear whenever you have a forced hyperextension. So if we look from just side on, remember hyperextension is gonna be when we stretch everything this way. So all of these structures in the backside of the knee are going to be pulled. Getting rid of the capsule and that oblique popliteal ligament, the next structures that are gonna tear in succession are oftentimes the ACL and the PCL. Of course, the ACL sitting deep inside the knee along with the PCL. The degree to which the structure is on the inside of the knee like the MCL and the outside of the knee like the LCL tear often have to do with how much of that varus or valgus alignment was imparted on the knee with the injury. If we recall that photo here where we saw that severe amount of, again, varus alignment, that's gonna correspond to the structures over here on the outside of the knee being stretched, particularly that LCL ligament, but then also a group of very complex structures called the posterolateral lateral corner that kind of sits right here in this region that is a little more complicated than what's on the anatomy tool, but is oftentimes injured with as severe of a mechanism like this. To dislocate your knee joint, you have to have at least three of the four major ligaments torn. So between the ACL, PCL, MCL, and LCL, three of those ligaments being torn will result in a dislocated knee, to put it simply. But honestly, with an injury like this, the number one concern on the doctor's mind is injury to the blood vessels and the nerve. If we look on the back side of the knee, we have a big blood vessel called the popliteal artery that transports blood down to the lower leg. But again, remember everything with a hyperextension is being stretched on the back side of the knee. And so with that severe of a hyperextension, you run the risk of actually tearing or injuring this artery. Zach Miller was a great example where there was concern for artery damage with his injury. Also on the back side of the knee, we have a bunch of really important nerves. We have specifically the tibial nerve on the back side, and then we also have on the outside of the knee, this common perineal nerve. A lot of people who watch Mike's martial arts are familiar with this because it's the nerve on the outside of the leg that gets affected with low leg kicks. Remember, this is on the outside, that severe amount of varus misalignment with his knee injury can tear basically all of these structures and lead to honestly more impact in just general function from injury to the nerves and the blood vessels than just the ligaments and the tendons themselves. If there's compromise in blood flow with a joint dislocation, you have around four to six hours before you can see permanent signs of injury to the muscle in a situation like this. So number one priority here after they get the knee stabilized, check the blood flow because if there's compromised blood flow, you have to act even more quickly. Now, with something this severe, they probably checked the arteries anyways, just because of how badly the knee was injured. But know that when this happens, the medical team is on a clock because time is critical here whenever we're dealing with potentially injured blood vessels. Some final learning pearls for anybody who might be an athletic trainer or a physician someday out in a situation like this. Number one, when you get out there, it's going to be very apparent that the knee is dislocated when it's this bad. Whenever you do your basic positioning and sort of stressing of the ligaments, Whenever we test the MCL and the LCL in clinic, we always put a little bit of flexion in the knee around like 30 degrees, but we also check it with the knee fully extended because if there's laxity with the knee fully extended, that suggests a major injury and you have to be worried about a dislocation. So always on the field, check those ligaments and a little bit of knee flexion, straighten the knee all the way, check them when the knee is fully extended because if there's laxity with the knee fully extended, you've got to worry about a knee dislocation and a more significant injury. You might wonder too, like how will I know if those ligaments are fully torn? And trust me, having felt some of these knees where the ligaments are completely torn and it's dislocated, there's basically just no stop. There's just no give whenever you go to stress the knee and it basically just moves to where you can almost put some varus or valgus stress and then it just stays in place and doesn't go back in a position. So don't worry, you'll know whenever these ligaments are fully torn and you're dealing with a dislocated knee, but always be sure and check the blood flow because like I said, sometimes the knee might go back in place and it'd be a transient dislocation. So blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below and also let me know 
What other historical injuries you want me to take a look at that maybe I haven't covered yet on this channel? Thank you again for watching. Be sure and subscribe to stay up to date with all those future videos. And thank you again to Blinkist for sponsoring the video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.